Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, I will talk about the high dynamic range capabilities of event-based sensors, such as the dynamic vision sensor, uh, using examples. So let's review some of them. This is perhaps one of the earliest uh, uh, videos trying to convey the message that event cameras, such as the dynamic vision sensor, uh, have a high dynamic range. So here we have, I think, Toby Dalbrook wearing sunglasses, and then he's showing these lines. He takes out the glasses and shows that uh, the DVS, and in this case, DVS-128, is able, able to see the scene practically unchanged. There is a bit more of uh, background noise because uh, event sensors, they have more noise in the dark uh, regions than in bright regions. But apart from that, uh, there is not much more difference. This is a more formal example. So remember, each pixel uh, works independently from the other pixels and so adapts to the light that it receives and chooses its own set point. So here we are waving the hand behind the sunglasses and we're still able to see quite well. almost uh, unaffected. The output of the sensor is almost unaffected by the, by the sunglasses. This is a more quantitative approach uh, from uh, the conference paper that it, then it gave rise to the seminal paper on the DBS. And they are using a light meter and a density step uh, target, this Edmund chart. So this is a standard chart. And what they did is that they uh, cast the shadow. So they have half of the scene illuminated with one uh, amount of light, in this case, 780 lux. And on the right, uh, the other half of the scene was um, much darker, as you can see on the, on the two right images. And the ratio between the, the light on one side to the other side is about 135. So it's, it's quite big, yet um, there is not much difference in the way that we see the, uh, for example, here the letters, right? We, we see that there is a bit more noise, more noisy events on the right because there are more noisy events on, on darker areas. But aside from that, we are still, um, it's, the, the output of the sensor is uh, much more robust than the output of a standard camera, as you would see on the right. So the high dynamic range is uh, also very clear in this uh, snapshot. This is uh, showing um, the output of the Davis, which comprises a frame-based camera in grayscale here, and the output of an event-based camera, which is in red and green dots, when they are both looking at the solar eclipse in March 2015. So this region here that is bright, it's white, it's overexposed in the frame and somebody is waving the hand in front of it. And uh, so this is very, very bright and this region is very, very dark, yet we are still able to see both regions with the events, not with the grayscale image, but yes, with the events. And that's basically the high dynamic range, the ability to see in very bright and very dark scenes simultaneously. We can show also uh, that the high dynamic range uh, can be used to uh, design a visual odometry algorithm that is robust uh, to such illumination conditions. So on the left, we see the output of uh, a standard camera. In the middle, we see the output of an event-based camera. These events are red and blue dots. They are binned into some millisecond frames. That's why we see them red and blue over a black background. We don't see the space-time visualization of the events. And on the right is the output of this visual odometry algorithm. The reference is at the bottom. And uh, it's basically creating and updating a 3D map of the scene color coded according to depth. And it's localizing the camera with respect to that map. The camera is represented with this blue pyramid. And it, this example shows that when the sun is in the field of view uh, and you almost cannot see the, the back of the, of the sign, you're still able to get that information with the 
with the event camera and you're able to build a map and localize. There is a lot of information here in the events that uh, provides valuable uh, cues for uh, visual dometry. Um, this is another example of uh, high dynamic range. In this case, on the left, we have uh, events. So grayscale means there was no events. Bright means there were brightness increase, so positive events. And dark means there were negative events. And on the right, we see the output of a uh, standard camera. And this is a typical scene where we are driving through a tunnel and inside is dark and outside is very bright. So there is no single exposure time that would allow us with uh, a phone camera to capture both inside and outside. What we see in the middle is the output, output of an algorithm that takes the events as input and tries to reconstruct some brightness signal that is consistent with the event. Uh, so this is, in this case, uh, a very recent paper and it's using a neural network to come up from the events from a group of events is producing this this image and uh, it's it's quite a good result right you can see both things inside the tunnel and outside the tunnel there is no saturation so not only high dynamic range capabilities um, to see both very bright and very dark in the same scene, we can just look at what happens when it's already sufficiently dark. And this is an example from the original paper, the 2008 paper, where we are moving some black text over a white background uh, in moonlight. So in very low light conditions, 0 0.1 looks. And here we are seeing a slice of 180 millisecond, and uh, there are about 8,200 events. But still, um, there is almost uh, no motion blur, right? The, the signal is quite intelligible. On the right, you see the video that I explain it, and it has some artifacts due to the, the video encoder. <clears throat> so this shows that event-based sensors, they, they kind of have a very high dynamic range, and they also work in low light conditions. And this motivated the following example, which is how to design applications where you can have robots that are robust to difficult illumination conditions that would not be possible with a normal camera. So we have here, it's a, it's a drone that is flying with a camera that is looking downward and therefore it's seen um, and this scene. On the left, we see the output of a uh, standard camera. So the, the, the camera that the drone is carrying, it's a Davis and it has the grayscale output and also the event based output. The events are represented here as red and blue dots over a black background. And these, again, the events are binned into some millisecond frames. From these events, then uh, some other event frames uh, are generated. And in these event frames, some features are tracked. These features are the green ones. And what you see in the video is that this is done in closed loop control, fusing with the data with the IMU. And when the lights go off, because of the capabilities of the event-based camera, the drone is still able to track features and to fly in closed loop control. It's not crashing or is doing emergency landing. So these are some references. Um, and I encourage you to look at the experiments that show the high dynamic range capabilities of the cameras and the resultant vision system. Uh, often they are qualitative comparing with the standard frame-based camera and that's probably this uh, computer vision references. The first one, which is the seminal work, tries to be a bit more quantitative and uses a light meter to give actual numbers. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.